What's up everyone, Ronnie Chavez here, and today we're going to be learning the dash vault, and then I'm going to show you 10 additional dash vault variations and short little tutorials on them. The dash vault is really good for speed because it is just like a hurdle. It's like you're trying to keep your momentum the same and you're just touching your hands down to just make sure you don't uh, trip or fall and then just land on your feet again. So you could say it's kind of like the speed vault in that way, but it is a little bit more dangerous than the speed vault because you are jumping and committing to leaning back and then having to put your hands down to get your feet back down. So that's the basic overview of how the dash vault works. Now to actually learn the dash vault, it's good to start out with a solid progression into it. So I would recommend starting on something wider, maybe even padded if you're in a gym, that's optimal but you can still learn this outside. Just make sure you have a, a comfortable spot to place your hands on doing the dash vault. Now, the progression I like to do going into it is that I'm basically going to be jumping up onto it with my feet and then putting my hands down to kind of push myself off like the second half of the dash vault motion. Just practice that motion a few times till you start getting comfortable with what that feels like doing the jump and then placing your hands down and kind of kicking your feet out and then back down to land on your feet. And then you can start progressing to doing it with just one foot touching down. And then the next progression is just to practice jumping over it like a normal jump so you don't want it to be super high and just clear it completely but kind of be aware of where the object is as you're clearing it so you can think about placing your hands down. So now you're just going to combine those two progressions, the jump over and the touchdown with your hands, only this time you're not going to touch your feet down at all and just go into it. Main thing is to make sure you don't clip your feet on the jump and make sure that you hit your hands in the right spot as you push down. As long as those two things happen, you should be fine. But if you're missing, if you clip your feet or if you miss your hands, that's when it gets sketchy. So just make sure you focus on clearing your feet over and then placing your hands down. When you have your dash vaults down and you're ready to progress them to handrails, this is where it gets a little bit sketchier. You wanna make sure when doing a dash vault on a handrail that you're very precise on your hand placement. So I'd even recommend on a ledge, just practicing aiming for one spot, whether it's the middle of the edge or one of the corners of the ledge. Just make sure you can hit that spot consistently so that when you do it on a rail, you know you can hit it consistently. With rail dash vaults, I tend to not go as fast because if you miss going really fast, it can just end up worse. So what I like to do is I like to go a bit slower working into it and once again, I'm just gonna be jumping over it. The first time doing a rail dash, I'm not gonna be leaning back so much. It's just gonna be getting my feet over and then trying to get my hands down and going from there. Then once you get more comfortable, you can start doing it like you would a normal dash vault. So with our dash vault variations, we're gonna start simple and then work our way up to more advanced dash vault variations. Starting off, we're just gonna simply do a dash precision or dash to gain distance. Now dash vaults aren't ideal for gaining distance versus Kong vaults, but you can still use them as a way to do a cool move and clear distance into a precision or cat leap or things like that. The main thing when going for distance is that you wanna make sure you have a lot of speed going into it and that as you jump and plant your hands, you're not doing anything that'll stop your momentum. You mainly just want to be using it to kind of push away, to just get your feet back down, and then just fly as far as possible. Okay, our next variation is the dash vault X out. Now what this is doing, it's doing a basic dash vault once again, only this time you're going to be kicking your legs as high as possible, almost like a pike, but then spreading them out. So you're doing kind of like this flash kick, um, this X out as you do the dash vault. This is pure flash. There's nothing effective about this move. And it's a, it's a more basic way to do a flashy dash vault. The more flexibility you have, the more you can spread your legs out and the crazier you can make it look. But all it is really is just making sure you get your legs straight and as spread out as you're flexible. All right, moving on to some spins. This first one is gonna be the dash vault 180. Basically what you wanna do is as you set into the dash vault and picking your hips up, right after the push from your hands, you're gonna start 
twisting your hips and lead this rotation with your hips and just simply do that 180 shift and you'll notice that as long as you pop your hips at the right time, it's pretty easy to get the 180 around. And then you can turn this into a dash vault, turn vault even. When doing it into a turn vault, this is where it gets a little bit scarier because you're actually gonna be committing back towards the wall. You wanna make sure you don't have a ton of speed so that you can stay close to the handrail. And then as you pop your legs over and pop that 180 with your hips like we were just talking about, you're going to immediately shoot your feet back towards where you came from and reach with your hands try and grab it as quickly as possible because you're already falling at this point you only have a little bit of time to really catch that cat leap or that turn before you fall so our next progression is naturally going to be the dash vault 360 with the dash vault 360, it's gonna, you're gonna get the spin the exact same way. You can kind of push with one hand to kind of help throw in a little bit more spin. And you really wanna make sure you get a solid push from the uh, wall you're dash vaulting over so that you can get a little bit more air time. It helps if you actually bring your hips closer to the object as you're jumping up to it so that you can kind of push with your upwards momentum instead of just falling onto the dash vault. And then once you start the spin, it's just simply driving that spin together, wrapping in your body, and just leading with your feet and hips to get that spin around. Another variation that can actually help you do the spin is to do a little bit of an X out and then kick into the spin so that you get more spinning power from that kick. All right, next up we have an actual combination of the Kong Vault and the Dash Vault, which is the Cash Vault. Now I've done the Cash Vault before in other list trick tutorials, but this time I'm doing it on a table with distance. So it's like you're Konging, going really far, leaning back, and then dashing at the end of the table. I'm going to do it both ways, short way and long ways. Main thing with this to keep in mind is that you're doing a Kong like you'd do a double Kong or like a Kong Precision, only instead of keeping your momentum, your body forward, you're going to tuck your feet through and start leaning back and then just wait till the right moment to plant your hands down to push off and land successfully. This next one's a little pointless, but it's fun to do and it's a little bit of a challenge, but it's a double dash. So you're gonna dash and then dash again. Uh, it's a lot harder to do on super distances, so I'm only gonna do it between this distance here, but basically, on the first dash, you want to not bring your feet up all the way, but just halfway so that on the second one, you kick your feet up a little bit more to try and keep your hips up so then you can finally push off again. Because the hard part is once you do that first push, if your feet are all the way up, then on the second push, they're already dropping and you're not gonna really be able to get the second push in. So it's more practice of just coordination than anything else. So for the next two dash vault variations, because I didn't have any locations nearby to actually do these, I'm gonna be showing clips of when I've done them previously. So the first one is the dash to dive roll. Now this move is an advanced dash vault move and can especially be dangerous if you don't do it properly because you're pretty much doing a dash vault straight to your head, straight to a dive roll. So you really gotta make sure you have the right technique and training to get this around to land successfully in a dive roll. But basically with this move, what you're doing is you want to get decent momentum going into a dash vault. With this one, you're gonna keep your hips low to the object you're jumping over, and you wanna pop your feet up uh, relatively high, but then as soon as you plant your hands, you wanna pop your hips up, kind of tuck your feet in, do like a nice kick with them, and you're going to push off with your hands, and you're gonna do this whole motion as quickly and powerfully as you can to snap into a rotation as quickly as possible. And then from there, you're gonna stay tucked until you come around towards your head, and then begin opening up to lead with your hands to absorb the impact and go into the dive roll. All right, our next and our final dash vault variation is in my opinion, one of the most dangerous ones, in this list of dash vault variations, but it is the dash bomb. Now this is one that I don't do often because it is dangerous, but when I do do it, I have a, a high drop, so that makes it even more dangerous, and I have to have really trained for it so I feel confident in doing it. But if you can do a decent dash to dive roll, then you should be able to dash bomb from a decent height. But again, this is something you definitely wanna practice into a gym at a phone pit. To do this move, 
with the height, it's like you're gonna do a dash to dive roll on flat ground only because you have that extra drop. You then tuck it into a front flip and whip it around as fast as you can so then during that extra f falling time you have, you're going to be able to get a full flip around and land on your feet. I actually have a full tutorial I've done on the dash bomb that you can go check out. I'll have a link to it in the description below. But otherwise, that's my final dash vault variation. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of the many dash vault variations there are. Be sure to train safe as you go out and do these. And be sure to let me know what variations of vaults or tricks or whatever else you'd like me to do in the future. So be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and thanks for watching. Noise.